Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, I thought I was done for the evening, but I'm not. <laughs> so um, there's a video that I was working on and the Lord laid it on my heart that I needed to just go ahead and put this out here. And it's entirely you're going to be surprised the things that the Lord is going to ask you about. Those who are going to be standing in front of him, you know, it talks about in, in, um, Revelation talks about how if you're on the right side of God, it's those who have done his work, who has done well, will be the sheep, so to speak. And then on the left side of him is going to be the goats. And it's basically those who walked in on righteousness and did whatever they want to do. And guys, there's going to come a time when the books are going to be opened up and the books is going to be where all your deeds Everything that you ever done will be will be um, reviewed by the Lord in that day, and so the Lord put it on my spirit to talk to you guys about how you're going to be surprised what you will be asked about in the day of judgment, and it will be not it won't be about miracles and works, but your obedience, your relationships, and your sacrifice to God and for others. So you will be surprised what you'll be asked about in the day of judgment. It will not be about miracles and works, but your obedience, your relationships and sacrifice to God and others. And I'm going to give you a few examples of what the Lord gave to me. This is not the end all be all, but a few things that he put in my spirit. He says, you'll be asked about how you handled a private matter entrusted to you. You'll be asked about those, those you, um, you held in unforgiveness, okay? You'll be asked about secret malicious acts against others, lies you told and never confessed. And he even mentioned here about attorneys and law enforcement will stand before God to answer for lies, um, for lies told to imprison the innocent and set the guilty free. Um... It talks about wrongful deaths of tribes and nations at the hands of greater nations. It says you will be asked about people you hurt and you never apologize to. People who suffered emotionally because of your wrongdoing and your um and you just not confessing and making those things right, you not apologizing, you not mending those uh people that you've wounded. Oh, here it goes. Those who are wounded and in darkness as a result of your actions and your failure to make it right. You're going to be asked about people that left the faith because of your actions and your failure to speak up when you saw wrong being done to others or that person. People you never forgave and they died with that weight upon them. Those you refused to help in need how you treated the less fortunate, how you treated those of other races, souls that died in sin because you failed to witness, how you treat your wife, your husband, your children, <laughs> their souls too, guys. Um, you're going to be answering for another person's emotional journey and turmoil because you use your position and your power against them. You'll be asked about wicked thoughts, your e uh, wicked, evil thoughts against others. Sexual immorality, how that will be judged is, is be ju you'll be judged on defiling yourself. You'll be judged on defiling the other person. If you were married or that other party was married, you'll be judged on defiling the household, the wife, the husband, putting the children in harm's way spiritually. Um, leaders, church leaders will be judged on the backslidden journey and pain of a soul that, that you failed to apologize to, or you hurt on purpose and failed to apologize to because of pride, failing to take heed to God's instructions, um, failing to take heed to God's instructions in relationships, failing to take heed to God's instructions as it pertains to winning souls or winning someone to the Lord. God even says there are times that 
There are things that some things it's possible that we have done that we don't even know that we have done. For example, the Lord told you to witness to somebody and you refuse to witness to him, not knowing that that person is going to commit suicide. Failure to take heed, take heed to God's instructions in terms of obedience. Guys, what God is saying in terms of all of these things is this is a time to repent. This is a time to repent. You're not because a lot of the things that you see, there are things, maybe some of those things applies to you. And maybe you can think of some other things that you've done. You see, there are things that you know that you've done or you fail to do. And this is why God has given all of us the opportunity to get these things right. You trying to hold somebody in malice and an art is not worth your eternity. You have to make those relationships right. People that you have hurt, people that you have hurt in past relationships that you've done them wrong, even if you don't feel that you've done wrong, it's time to forgive. It's time to ask the Lord to forgive you. If you've left somebody, you've broken their heart and you did them dirty, just did them grimy and just walked out of that relationship and you never said you're sorry and that person is reeling, thinking they have done something wrong, they're stuck. The worst thing that you can do, guys, is to have God go behind you and clean up a mess that you could have cleaned up on your own and him helping you do it the right way. The worst thing is for God to go behind you, clean up your mess. In, and when I mean that means you, when I say that, I simply mean this. You have heard, God shouldn't have to go apologize to nobody for you. God shouldn't have to go and comfort someone's heart because of what you did. When you could simply go to that person and say, I'm sorry, I should not have done that. Even if that person never forgives you, you did your part. I was wrong for doing this. I should not have handled you that way. I, I was ignorant. I was selfish, whatever, but you don't. And then God got to go and fix this broken person. And God is even showing me in, in the churches, the, the crazy stuff, the hurtful things that some leaders have done to other people that they have left the church and they were scorned. And you tell people not to talk to them anymore. And you shut doors on them and you call this person and that person and sabotage their business or sabotage things you're trying to do. And you just walk in in pride and saying, well, God led me. And God is saying, I've never led you to do anything like that. I would never do that to my child. But there's a lot of people that's walking in those things. And God is saying, he's laid it on your heart to do right. And you didn't do right. So guess what? God had to go and mend the broken heart of these people that's been hurt. And so God is saying, this is the time to make things right. This is your opportunity for, listen, you can't go back and undo what you did. But you can go back and say, I am sorry. You can get on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me. I did this thing wrong. God, I handled this situation wrong. And listen even more carefully if he wants you to reach out to somebody and say, I am sorry. Forgive me for what I did to you two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago. Forgive people that have hurt you. You know, forgiveness doesn't mean you got, if this person is just bad news, it doesn't mean you have somebody that's toxic and crazy all up in your house breaking you know, H E double hockey sticks all up in your house, but you have to forgive them because the time, what you don't want to do is stand before the Lord. You can't go back for that soul that may have gone even further out because you didn't obey the Lord, but you can say, God, forgive me for souls that I failed to talk to and win and obey God. I'm so sorry. And he's going to forgive you. But if you're walking around in pride and in your ministry and, and in your talents and in your skills and in your tithes and offering and whatever else you're given and you mess around and leave this earth or you find yourself standing before God in judgment and these things are now brought to you, things that you can fix now, it's going to be worse then. So the word of the Lord is make these things right. Make these things right. Because I'm not, you're not going to stand before the Lord he doesn't want to hear about how well you play the tambourine. He doesn't want to hear how well you did, how many times you went to church. He's going to ask you about your obedience, how you handle souls, and how you dealt with your relationships here on this earth, how you dealt with the less fortunate. So guys, let's walk in the things of God. When you get off here, pray to the Lord, just like I'm going to do, and make sure you're in right standing with our Heavenly Father. All right, guys, peace out.